Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from Cool Cleveland. We are here at Expona 2023, and we're here with Beatrice Lamb, Operations Manager, VTL Amplifiers. Thank you so much for taking a moment and talking. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. I'm happy to be um, joining you for this uh, s s chat yes. online. Yes. Talk to, uh, briefly about your background, because you have a serious engineering background, right? <laughs> Well, um, um, I was um, studying engineering, electrical engineering at Cornell and then did my graduate work at Purdue. Mm -hmm. And after I graduated, I became a software engineer. I worked for Hewlett Packard and uh, did a whole bunch of engineering projects uh, in software. Um, but my interest has always been in music. So that's how I ended up in this industry where we're um, you know, making amplifiers for very high-end um, use, and uh, my my focus is really the sonic, you know, characteristics. How to make amplifiers sound as natural as possible? Yeah. And I understand that it's your ears that sign off on these amplifiers before they go out the door. You give them a listen. You're the one who you work with the other engineers, but it's really your ears, right? That that we're all hearing when we hear your beautiful amplifiers. Well, I think that's very important, and I, I feel that's a very important part of my job, is to make sure that every amplifier that leaves our factory, you know, sounds exactly like what we envision. And uh, in addition to checking the sonic characteristics and how it sounds, uh, playing real music through it, I listen it in our listening room, I also do the final QC check. I'm just making sure everything is okay, and then sign off on the product. Yeah. So you've been in this industry now for a few decades, and you've risen to the very top of one of the biggest uh, high-end audio companies. Talk about this issue of diversity, which is our, our, our topic here, you know, age diversity, gender, uh, cultural diversity. What are your thoughts on that? So for me, um, you know, I, I'm always trying to uh, what do you call that, brick the uh, glass ceiling? Yes. So when I was in, uh, in engineering school, I was the only woman there, so I, you know, <laughs> I was trying to brick the glass ceiling and I did very well uh, at school. And, um, and with, uh, at um, HP also, you know, it's, it's one of those. But in this industry, uh, when I first joined, and this what must be 20 some years ago, there were very, very few women yes. in the industry. But I'm, I'm happy to see more and more women are joining. Right. And I hope that more will become more involved in actually the product development and in, in, uh, understanding customers and the market and putting all back into making the products as high quality as possible. Yeah. It's so different now than when you first joined uh, decades ago. What has changed, and I want to get to like these solutions, you know, not just everybody wringing their hands, oh, we need more, this is a problem. What do you see as some solutions? What can we do to make it easier for women, people of color, young people to get involved in these things? What specific suggestions might you have? Well, I think first of all, um, the industry needs to actually proactively go out and look for women to join. Because women's, I mean, to me, Women's years are actually quite, you know, much better. You know, I think women's hearing and sensitivity, it, it, it's uh, really, really there. And not, and not to use that, that talent, you know, not to be able to uh, pull from this uh, really talented team of women who could join the industry. It's, it's uh, sad. It's very sad. You know. I keep saying there's like 50% of the population is sort of locked out, right? What are we doing? Why are we doing it this way? Um, I, well, I think part of it, if you, if you look at the founders of the company, the, our industry is still a sm small, you know, fa uh, companies that are fairly small size. And if you look at all the founders and all that, they're mostly male. Um, so I think it, we, it has to come from the top, right? The, the realization that these companies are missing out on this, you know, 50% of the population of the pool of, of talents out there. So, um, and, and bringing more interns or, you know, uh, trying to develop um, this uh, pool of talents when they're at a younger age uh, really helps. Yeah. 
What specifically worked for you as you were coming up? Did you have mentors? Did you, were there groups that you joined? Were there um, you know, people specifically that helped you along the way? Or did you read some things? Okay, so sorry, I kind of have to uh, make, a, make a confession. <laughs> I actually um, married, I'm married to uh, Luke, Luke Manley, who is uh, one of the founders of the company of VTL. So when, I've, when we first got married, I mean, he knew that I was a music lover, audiophile, I have all this equipment at home and all that. But um, I didn't really want to join him. Uh, husband and wife team is very difficult. It's difficult for the relationship and all that. Anyway, um, but for some reason, I felt like I could contribute. I was thinking about this. And I can contribute to his company in some ways. It didn't mean, to, it wasn't meant to be a long-term uh, working relationship but we actually once I started I felt like yes there are many many aspects I can go in and, and work in the, yeah and then finally is are there things you're doing in your company now because you're there because you're a woman because you're an Asian woman um, that you are doing maybe to attract more of the right kind of people that you think you should be attracting well um, our company is small so uh, you know but but anyway Talking about women and diversity in our company, our own staff who works um, in the production area, in all, fifty percent of them are women and minorities too. So, and uh, they have all, you know, come in without uh, really knowing much about what they're doing in the industry or the manufacturing of the products, and to help them. We go through the, the uh, training program. We have a whole set of training program to bring them up to skills, how to work on these high-end products, what to look for in terms of making high quality uh, electronics. So the training is very important, extremely important, yes. Because that way they don't fail. And that way you're supporting them in their careers and not letting them just yeah. leave. Well, um, you know, making mistakes is, it's just common. It's just we're human, so people will make mistakes, you know. And so for me, uh, how to talk to the staff, how to train them, uh, how to make sure that they are looking at this as I'm not talking about the mistakes personally, but we are trying to improve the whole the whole process. Um, so it's it's very beneficial. My 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 employees started off with, you know, being very passive. But now they proactively, would, they know they would contribute. If they let me know where the problems are, they are contributing, right. yes. And that's what happens when you let them know that you welcome their input, then they respond in kind. Beatrice, thank you so much for taking time, and not only here, but for what you've done uh, in the industry. And for being, I know it's a, a beacon for other women, for other engineers. Thank you for, for just doing what you do. Thank you so much, Thomas. I'm so happy that um, we get a chance to chat and say hello to all, all your viewers and readers. <laughs> okay. You're so kind. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank yeah, you. thanks. Yeah. Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from Cool Cleveland. We're here at Expona 2023.